One of the incredible things about Android is that you're actually building something with the UI. Like, isn't that, that's, I don't know. I mean, to me, that's like when you're doing real computer science, building stuff that's really gonna change the world. I mean, the things you interact with have a UI. Um, now, this introduces this like whole other huge can of worms here about how things look. And this is a rabbit hole that goes down to the center of the universe. So uh, we are not gonna take you too far down that hole, but I do wanna show you a little bit about why things look the way they do. Um, and particularly for this particular MP. This particular MP, you do need to do a little bit of work here. There's not nothing, right? And I'll, I'm going to lead you uh, gently in the direction of what needs to happen. Uh, but let's let's look at overall. Uh, so we, we said, you know, this main activity is the code that runs when that screen that you see when you start up the app um, is loaded. And so, but then there's this question of like, why does the app look the way it does? Why does it look like this, right? So, you know, I've got a search bar up here. I've got this list of courses down here. Um, why, right? What if I wanted it to look a little bit different? How would I have to change that? So I, I'm trying to put some comments in here to, to help you out. So Android, like many other frameworks that do this type of UI, divides things into two pieces. There is uh, something that describes how the display should look and then there's code that does things like add data to the display and things like that. So let's look at these two parts together. What we're looking at right now, when we look at mainactivity.java, is the code that runs. And that's important that, that we're gonna see in a minute that code is required to do things like respond to user actions. But there's also a layout. Now, Android does not use Java for layout. It uses a different, uh, it's not a programming language, it's called a markup language called XML. And I'm gonna show you, and you know, again, get ready to have your mind blown, um, what this looks like. So this is the code, this is XML, that is the reason why this looks like this, okay? This XML code causes this thing to look that way, okay? Now, you might not believe me, right? Uh, let me try to convince you. So uh, let's put something in here. Uh, like a text view, uh, and we'll say uh, with this wrap content, height is wrap content, and now we'll say text um, here. And it's gonna be mad at me about that, but that's okay, I can live with that. Um, let's rerun the app and let's see what happens. Uh, so this is a, a pretty simple change, uh, we would hope, uh, and Got to start up and check it out. Look it up there. It says here, right? So I just, you know, I, I'm to, to prove to the skeptical that this is actually what's being used. So the XML here is something that you can understand, and there are many people that work directly on this. However, there's another way to interact with this, which is to use this design view. Now we'll cover this more in the future if we need to. Um, the design view allows you to work with this more like in a GUI type setting where I can add things. This is super powerful, uh, but also like sort of intimidating. There's lots of different components to the UI that you could add or remove or whatever. Um, and so at some point later on, we'll give some of you with a little bit of a design bent a chance to kind of flex your, uh, flex your muscles here and, and, and have some fun and make this look better. Because right now it looks simple. Uh, let's put it that way. Um, and so... This, but this is kind of uh, why this looks the way it does. Now, there's the way things look, but then there's also the way they respond. This is an interactive app, right? And so, for example, there is a search uh, button or the search field, sorry, here. Uh, let me go back to the code view. Um, that search view is right here. Um, and that's uh, is part of this toolbar that's at the top of the app. So you see the toolbar is up here. Let me restart it to get rid of that. Uh, silly message I put in there. Um, so the, the toolbar is up at the top. It's a search view. That is why it has this search icon here. Um, and it has, it allows me to enter some text. Now, right now, when I enter text, nothing happens. The question is, who should know about when the text changes and how is that actually accomplished? So let me show you this. When my main activity starts up in on create, one of the things that it does, and this is right down here, is that it calls this method. So this is using the data binding library that's provided by Android. And what this does is it kind of connects this activity 
to this specific layout, right? So this is in our layouts directory and then activity main. And then this r.layout.activity main is how we refer to that particular layout. So this basically says this activity is using this layout. Um, this layout has different IDs for different parts of it. So there's a toolbar, there's a search, you'll see this Android ID. This exists to allow me to refer to it as part of my activity. So down here, you'll see binding.search.setOnQueryTextListener this. So what on earth is happening here? What's happening is this search component can provide events or it can basically tell me when the content has changed, but I have to tell it to do that. In order to register the activity to receive this information, I have to implement this interface that's called search view on query text listener. If I don't implement this, so if we take this off, what you're going to see is now this doesn't work because I have to implement that interface in order to receive this particular piece of information. That interface has two methods, okay? Um, and one of them is on query text change. On query text change gets called whenever the text in the query changes. Strange, I know. Uh, so let's try it. Um, let's actually see if it's working. I've got a log tag in here already. Uh, and so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up our, our log cat. I got rid of this silly search thing. And uh, now let's try to, let's uh, check it out. So you'll see every time that text changes, that method gets called. Right now I'm just logging that there was a change, but eventually, you're gonna to wanna to do something with that information. You're gonna to wanna to maybe use that information to maybe filter the list of courses that are displayed. Um, and so if you, you know, this is where you would do that. And then you have to look at, you know, uh, something like this that will give you a sense of um, how, well, that list adapter in general has some methods that will be helpful here for, for adjusting the state of, of the, the, the courses that are visible. So, so anyway, so that's that. That's, you know, how, do, how do, this information comes back like how the main activity is notified when certain things happen in the UI. The last thing I wanna show you here, uh, and this is very much kind of a, a hint on the NP, and, and, and this, I, I wanna hand wave a little bit here. So we're using a library to render this list of courses. One of the things, in order to make this library flexible, one of the things that we do is we tell it how to render each individual item. And we do that using this particular layout, and I'm gonna to go to the code view, that's called item underscore course. It really should be called item underscore summary, but that's okay. Um, this uh, view uses something called data binding. Data binding means that for every um, one of these XML views, it has access to a variable called model that's a summary. So right now, what you, what's, you may wonder like, why, is, why are the courses shown the way they are? Well, right now, the problem is that the text that's being shown in this text view is model.number. That is the, and, and maybe we could change this, we could change this to be summary, uh, and then we could change this to summary.number, and we have to change this too. We'll get back to this later. This is for the next part of the MP. Um, but let's use something else. Let's use like, uh, and this is, this gives me all, the, let's use uh, department. Let's use title, why not, okay? Um, <coughs> excuse me. So let's, uh, let's say uh, apply changes and restart. Um, and give this thing a minute. Oh, it doesn't like this, okay. Yeah, it, yeah, I, I need to, well, that's okay. I need to fix this too. I shouldn't have changed the name, but oh well. I did and now I'm paying the consequence. Um, but let's see how this looks now, because again, this is how we tell it what every item in this list should actually look like. Um, and, oh, okay, so sorry, there are, I, I should not have made this, this, let's go back and let's just have this be model rather than summary, hit stop, uh, and try to rerun this and see if it works. All right, do, 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 do. It's gonna run, it's going to run, and it's gonna, okay, now I'm back to number, right? But I, what I wanted to do is try something else. So I'm gonna try having it print the title. 
you see here that the, the properties that are available are the result of those getters. I could actually also have it call, well, no. See, it says title from get title. So just like Jackson does, it's kind of using this getter convention to be able to determine what information is available um, you know, to the UI. Okay, so now, again, I've changed. Uh, okay, cool, right? And so you'll see every item in the list is now displayed using its title rather than just the number. Um, and if you fiddle with this long enough, you'll actually get to the point where you can, uh, you'll, you'll need to come back to this to, to pass one of the test cases. Okay, so, and, and you know, you could go on and on about UI. There's all sorts of things. You could change the fonts, you could change margins, you could make things, you know, so for example, here's the text size for this. You know, maybe you think it's too big, you wanna make it smaller, you, you know, change this, rerun it. Um, now you're gonna see when it starts up again, the text is going to be quite a bit smaller. Um, you know, maybe that looks better, maybe it doesn't. Um, so there's lots and lots of things that you can do here. But the fact that we're actually interacting with this part of an app at all is super exciting. Uh, and this is something that, you know, I think is really important for you to see. Um, it's the, it, you know, use, user interfaces are interfaces for users. And if you're not building one, you're really not building something that any human user is ever going to use.